And might we all take a deep breath together. As I welcome your awareness back into the outer room, may the blessings of life find within each of you an open door to express the abundance of life forth. God bless you, dear hearts. I am Akasha, and I see amongst you some faces that I know and some faces that I have not seen for a very, very long time. I am Akasha, and I am a presence that for ages where mankind has lived upon this earth has known me not. I am indeed the mother's presence of this universe. And as you have come to understand the father's presence as a source of light and the masculine principle of life that provides mind, I am the mother presence that is the source of love. Love that expresses through every intelligent being, beginning with their feeling side of life, then their hearts. And as one's hearts continues to open in greater measure, then ultimately, I am the love that all humankind have long forgot that exists beyond the door to everything. And I come amongst you to introduce back into your consciousness the door to everything. Everything being your soul. Your soul being the great activity of your life that expresses divine love through your personality. Just as the father principle of life through the mind and the higher mind can present the intelligence of light. As I come upon you this day, I am truly grateful to be here and to take up the messenger's spiritual center and focus my own love rays, an outpouring of love to each of you. And I ask that you would take a few seconds and a deep breath the love of the mother's presence that has been absent upon this planet for millions of years comes now upon the great love rays from heavens above. The color of my ray, of course, is a beautiful pink. And although yet invisible, to the outer sight, yet some days, precious hearts, when moisture and rainbows and sunshine gathers in your atmosphere, thou can look up and see the mighty light rays that pour from your own physical sun and from sources of light beyond. And it is through the great outpouring of light rays and love rays and the element most forgotten too by the peoples of earth that the sacred fire is. That I am part of your ascended family who have been knocking on the doors of the hearts of the people of earth for several thousand years. I come this day to welcome many of you who have come to understand or seek to understand 
that on December 22, 2012, something happened or something was supposed to happen. Prophecies given, controversies spoken of, dire predictions. And I invite all of you to set that aside and to know the truth that December 22, 2012 became a new day in your world. A day to open the seventh golden age upon this planet. An age that is given to the people of earth to be 10,000 years. An age in which the people of earth will make contact to their own divinity, their own higher nature, and make contact with great beings of light, an angelic host, an ascended host, a celestial host, and intelligent beings of life that live beyond your solar system that have long awaited the people of earth to use the greatest gift life has given them, the gift of free will, to rise and to look for that which is something greater and something saner and something that evokes a peace-compelling presence within themselves that these peoples will take to nations upon this world. December 22, 2012. Unknown to the mass of the people, yet known to some in the scientific community of the world, a change in the relationship of your physical sun with your earth. A relationship that we refer to as the fifth sun rising. Your fellow planets, from Venus to Jupiter, Saturn, and more, just like your planet Earth, all has a unique relationship with the physical sun, in which the physical sun transmits energies, sun rays, light, vibration, that matches, infuses, and expands dimensional realities. Your own planet Earth, unknown to the peoples of Earth, have, has many great octaves and stratospheres, dimensions. We're an angelic host, an ascended host, live, and have long waited for the people of Earth to begin to rise up out of their fall and turn inwards and upwards and be open through free will to the help that is coming. This seventh golden age shall be an age of tremendous spiritual upliftment and every being on this earth Every intelligent being who has the capacity to say, I am, during this 10,000 year cycle, will be compelled to make a choice. And that choice being to stand and face the light and leave the shadows of darkness and war and conflict that has been upon this planet behind them. Great preparations, great preparations have been ongoing for this seventh golden age. For some 60,000 years, although unknown by the mass of the people, there have been preparations to bring forth the seventh golden age 
there have been former ages upon this planet. After all, you have all been here almost 15 million years. And current memories and civilizations do not speak for long forgotten our civilizations past. Yet I say to you, the importance of this seventh golden age is so great and victory is ensured. It is an age in which the purpose of the seventh golden age is to save the people of the earth from self-destruction and to save the earth itself from being destroyed. Yet not only to save the peoples and this planet earth, but to raise the peoples, to lift the peoples into a place in which their true divine nature expresses. Millions of years ago, a darkness, a sinister force entered upon this planet. This resulted in the peoples of earth falling from a state of grace, where before that sinister force arrived, the nature of every one of you, highly intelligent minds, omniscience, the power that you expressed in your lives was omnipotence. And the presence of your life, omnipresence. The powers that were yours to be many places at once. A fall from grace happened millions of years ago. And in that loss of higher intelligence and divine conception, duality was born upon this planet. Yet duality did not just happen. Duality was served unto the appetites and consciousness of the people of earth by indoctrinating within the minds the consciousness of the people a whole new set of beliefs. A belief in the most evil book of existence, the book of knowledge of good and evil. Setting aside the book of life that all intelligent beings use to develop themselves and become living gods and goddesses of this universe. The fallen state of the people of earth went on for millions of years ago. Approximately 100,000 years ago, this state gained such a momentous momentum that such a darkness spread over the earth. As a sinister force increased and finding almost every person on the earth a victim to a set of beliefs that would indeed deny their true spiritual nature offend their spiritual nature and eclipse their fine, magnificent minds and open hearts and draw the peoples of the earth subdued to a sinister force and lives of such suffering, lack, limitations, and wars. Some 75,000 years ago, the peoples of earth reached up their suffering so great pleas for help and those pleas and prayers were heard they were heard by your fellow planet Venus and the authority in our universe that comes from the heart of creation known as the great central sun placed your planet Venus in a guardian role.
over the planet Earth. The great monarchy of Venus. Yes, there is life on Venus, but not in the third dimension. The peoples of Venus are awakened, illumined, ascended, and free, and live in octaves of such divine perfection. The great monarchy of Venus is the great Kumara family, and the goddess of Venus, the Empress Venus, sent her son to the earth, the mighty Sanat Kumara. When he came to the earth, he called of the 10 billion human beings that had been assigned to the planet Earth. He called those who had some light within themselves, those who were reaching up asking for help, and the most advanced souls, and there were 10 million of them, of the 10 billion peoples assigned to come to the earth who arrived here almost 15 million years ago, 10 million responded to Sanat Kamara. And over a few centuries, with this guiding light from Venus, designed a divine plan. A divine plan that would save the people of earth and raise the people of the earth back up and out of a state of duality, back into a state of light and love and perfection. 60,000 years have passed. Great preparations have been ongoing behind the scenes. And of those 60,000 years, the last 3,000 years have been very important. Those who cried out for help have been undergoing training. And there are many of them who are amongst you here today. And they have been undergoing special training. Prophets have spoken of a time when there would be those who come to the earth and their works would be greater than any Christ, Buddha, Prophet, Muhammad that has ever come to this earth. They have been given a name, yet this name has been removed from the religions of the world that seek not these new superhumans that are coming. Jesus himself referred to those who would come after him, their works much greater than his own. And in the year 325 A.D., in the early years of the Roman Catholic Church and the formation of the New Testament and the gathering of his messages and what would be saved and what would be twisted and what would be presented in the New Bible. Many of his references to these new superhumans that would be coming, he called them the untouchables. The untouchables are those who responded to Sanat Kamara thousands of years ago and quietly have been cooperating and bringing forth a divine plan to save the people and the earth. You have known them. These untouchables, they have been in training in the past. They are pioneers of former human potential movements. They are great human beings, advanced souls that have been the source of great times that have occurred upon this planet. Times and small civilizations of magic that have almost been obscured from the memory of the people of Earth except some of them have been saved in legend and lore and fairy tale, such as the time of Camelot. These untouchables 
for 3,000 years have been living, coming back into embodiment, living the wheel of birth and death just as each of you do. And this is their last embodiment. This is the embodiment that they come to reveal themselves. Yet before I go on to that, because I say to you, I see that many of you here are those peoples. And you may have awakened to that recognition. And by waking to the recognition that you are one of those that prophets have spoke of that would come at this new time. The untouchables. Meaning there is no human hand, no human force, no nuclear explosion, nothing can touch these ones for the power of majesty, of life expresses through these ones. They are the silencers of war and disease. They shall walk amongst you. They shall feed the poor. They shall have answers and solutions that many cannot find at this time. They are individuals who for 3,000 years of incarnation, just like you, and in fact, every one of you may be one of those. You have hidden your true identity from yourselves, knowing that 3,000 years it would take to prepare yourselves to remove the eclipse that shadows your mind and keeps you from experience your omniscient mind, your open heart and from expressing the great powers of life. These untouchables, they have been the pioneers of great human potential movements. They are those who came in the time of Camelot. They are those who came forth in the great Renaissance masters, introducing great influences that would give new direction and new hope to the peoples of earth. Renaissance masters of science and art and music and literature and their works remain untouched by the duality of the outer world. And they continued to come into embodiment after the Renaissance period they came forth as great scientists, engineers, pi pioneers, initiating the engineering age, and then the electrical age, and the digital age that is upon you now. They are advanced souls. And for a while, each time they come back into incarnation, each time they come back into embodiment, like the people of earth, they wear a veil that allows them not to truly remember who they are and a path they have chosen long ago, a covenant, a promise they made to be a part of a solution in which seems that the people of earth have a choice to make. Bring about the end of your civilization. Bring about the end of your planet or make a new choice and bring forth wonderful solutions. The untouchables are here and many of you are them. The untouchables, as they announce themselves to the world, will have great powers. Powers to produce miracles. They will be vegetarian. They will not eat the animals of this world as the people do. They will be great teachers. They will demonstrate miracles in every field of life, not only 
the science of religion or spirituality. And in the last 82 years, more of these untouchables have been coming onto the planet in embodiment. For these last 82 years, from 1930 to 2012, were the last 82 years. The responsibility of these untouchables was to bring forth the first wave of the people of earth who would begin to awaken, reaching up for something greater some higher education that the educations and religions of this world does not offer them. The untouchables know that what has plagued the peoples caused the peoples to suffer and what has allowed some people to control the mass of the people is the terrifying book of knowledge of good and evil that introduces and imposes a consciousness, a belief in duality. It is so entrenched. And so long the peoples have lived this, that the peoples have compelled the powers of nature and the forces of the elements to respond. And the peoples themselves are left in a quagmire of their own human creation. The peoples of earth say to us, but there is good and there is evil. And we say to them, yes, there is because you created it. Do you forget that one of the greatest gifts that life has given each of you to go forth as creator beings. But behind that gift is free will. And if you use your free will to forget that there is life in this universe, if you use your free will to doubt that beings that seem to be invisible to you if you use your free will to doubt those things, then every being must honor you and respect you. Oh, beloved hearts, a light has come into this world. And that light has come forth through many. And that is the first of three great dispensations to come upon this planet and to ensure that this seventh golden age does succeed. Let us take a breath. So as I continue amongst you, and it may be very possible that every one of you is one of these ones that have been groomed. There are 10 million of them. 3 million have awakened in the world today. They know they have found their identity. They know their purpose. They know the destiny of their life. And they know they have come to be an untouchable. Three million on the earth. But there's ten million of you. Many of them we lost. We lost them to war. And the crime of drugs. And the infestation of murder. And all that is wrong upon this planet. Yet the numbers are strong. They're all of you who are awakening in the many spiritual paths that are in the world today. I ask you, why today are temples and churches 
And you are even beginning to see in some mosques today, the numbers are less. Buildings are emptied. Peoples are finding out too late that promises made to them ended up being lies, deceit. And I would like to suggest that every one of you is born with a sense of sovereignty. To be your own person. To make your own difference. Not too quick. To give yourself to anything you hear or presented. Including what I present to you. For that necessity of sovereignty in yourself is so vital and, and important in recognition that for 12 million years the people of earth have been giving their power away to a sinister force. A sinister force that will give you a little bit of good and a whole lot of of evil. So today, the untouchables are in the world. They have left behind educations, institutions, religions, for they know they not offer them the truth. And they know whether the science of universities or the religions of a church, the platform of any teaching is based upon the book of knowledge of good and evil, which intends to have one purpose, and that is to allow the scavengers of duality to keep you from rising and becoming. Many of the untouchables have already gone on in their freedom and achieved what I call and what some of you know is the ascension. They have gone on ahead living in the higher octaves to assist all of you to be raised up and out of the duality consciousness where the consciousness of wisdom and joy zero conflict zero conflict zero conflict that is a great building here and buildings that surround that make up this area of the United Nations, yes? United Nations has a great mantle and purpose to lift the people of earth up and out of a state of hell. The United Nations many a times has sent forth delegates and negotiators to nations that have warred. And there are those nations who seek to help and make a difference and bring an end to the wars that people set against themselves. Yet I question this. How can you send anyone to negotiate peace amongst the peoples when they themselves have not attained zero conflict in themselves? To those who will lead this world and the tremendous mandate of this United Nations to raise the people out of a state of hell in which people live in such suffering and warring fields 
where women are impressed, oppressed, and children are allowed to live in states of starvation. What a mantle. And I say that the United Nations itself must resurrect and realize thou shalt not be thorough and thou shalt not be victorious in thy great desire to lift people from hell into a state of peace. Unless there are those who you choose to be your spokespersons, those who you choose to be your delegates, those who you choose to represent and to negotiate peace treaties. Peace treaties, and I say to you, and mark my word, there have been many peace treaties that have been signed. Some have held, and many have not. And if I could follow you, dear hearts, or allow you to follow me, and follow the lives involved in peace treaties and all the peoples of the United Nations that came together, that created a lasting peace and the formation even of new nations. I can take you to the heart of negotiators past whose hearts were at peace. Send not those to negotiate for you. Peace to the world who do not have peace within their hearts. Is this reasonable? Can you fathom? I do not feel that it is an unreasonable statement to make. For I say to you, one whose choice is in life, one whose spiritual practice, one whose attitudes to life has healed all dysfunction and one has entered into a state of non-judgment soon opens a way for an amazing new way to experience life as a human being. Zero conflict. Essential harmlessness. And you know, dear hearts, when you come across those kind of people and they have zero conflict within themselves and they are the essence of essential harmlessness, you know that those are the peoples that you desire to negotiate for you. There are three great dispensations that have come onto the earth to ensure the seventh golden age will succeed. The first dispensation was the coming forth of a great light to this planet. That light came forth through the life streams of many who came upon this planet. And then the second dispensation, lost in the consciousness of the people, the dispensation of the sacred fire. And once these two dispensations anchored, and it was seen that hundreds of thousands of people around the world were discovering what their religions failed to offer them. No religion, no educational institution can correctly offer you an understanding of light, sheer, shadowless light that offers up the mechanics of a beautiful mind. None can offer this while one is teaching from the book of knowledge of good and evil. And this is why 
Many of you who are awakening. And many of you who have found spiritual paths that resonate for you and allows you to cultivate and evolve yourself spiritually have found spiritual paths that do not include the book of knowledge of good and evil and introduces you to something greater. What was and what will one day come forth for the entire people of earth. The book of life. A book that speaks of intelligent beings. Beings whose minds are all-knowing. Beings whom their will is not lost or split. Their will is a source of power. And beings who have the ability to express love. Love that is beyond the love that is known there. For I say to you, the people of earth in their duality have become quite experts in counterfeiting love or trying to counterfeit love. For I say to you, true love, divine love, ask not for itself. And true love can never be a hurtful love. This is the third great dispensation that is coming onto the earth now. In whatever way you conceive the Creator, the religions held hostile to the book of knowledge of good and evil, offer you an understanding of a creator God. And so often, that creator God is presented to you, not in the image of creation, but the people of earth, through the sinister force and duality, the people of earth have created a God. And he is found in all religions and he is made in the image of man's consciousness. Not in the image of endless light, endless purity and love. Many religions today present an idea of God and creation. An old man somewhere up there with a long beard waiting to decide whether you go to heaven, hell, or somewhere in between. It brings great joy to my heart that recently a cardinal of the Vatican announced that the Roman Catholic Church themselves invented the idea of hell to further hold control of the people of earth through fear. I am the mother's presence of this universe. I am Akasha, and by my voice, like any mother who sometimes must be firm to make sure her children must grow up well. Sometimes I can sound firm, but I say to you, precious hearts, is there a God of our universe? I will challenge you to know that some of the finest and greatest scientists only need to cast their eyes in a telescope and to see the starry heavens at night. The starry heavens, systems of worlds that operate and move with such precision and perfection. I have a question for the people of earth. How insane is your mind that you would question 
whether there is a higher intelligence behind this universe. You know, all of you know, but many of the peoples do not know. Yes, there is a higher intelligence. And yes, there is a father of our universe that represents the masculine principles of life, mind. But know ye, dear hearts, there is a mother presence to our universe. Her name is Akasha. And I flash my words through this messenger to each of you. As the Father is the mind, the light, I, the mother, am the heart and love. And what do you have here? In this understanding, you have spiritual polarity. What has the sinister force cast itself upon the good peoples of earth? What the sinister force tries to do is copy perfection. But you cannot copy perfection. So the sinister force introduces to the people of earth the book of knowledge of good and evil. This will set aside spiritual polarity, light and love, and introduce to you duality. This 10,000-year cycle is given to you to raise yourself out of the limited duality state of consciousness and raise yourself back to the beautiful spiritual consciousness of light and love. As the father principle of our universe has given you a mind. I, the mother principle of this universe, have given you a heart. And in between stands your individualized consciousness and your ability to say the most empowering, the most impacting, the most illumining words in the universe, regardless of the language that you use, those words being, I am. And go forth and use the intelligence of your wonderful heart, of your wonderful mind, and use the love that your heart produces once you know what truly is within your heart and once you welcome that love to be acting with your thoughts and you will begin the great path of lifting yourself up and out of the duality this path is called a path of resurrection. There are many who have come and prepared for this path. The Buddha came and speak, spoke of a new heart, the Buddhist heart. And the Christ came to speak of a new light. They were untouchables. And today they live in the great heavens. And I say to each and every one of you, it may very well be that you are an untouchable. That you are one of those. If you have set aside, not that you speak against religion, but you may know that you've gone as far as you can go there and there must be something more to life something that won't put you down something that won't come along and tell you again and again you are a sinner and therefore you should pay I would suggest that all of you have been seeking for the holiest of grails for this is what an untouchable does an untouchable seeks the holiest 
of grails, the understanding of consciousness, the search for one's true self. And I would like to suggest that your own experiences or spiritual paths that you may have been looking upon or spiritual teachers that you may be following and studying all are untouchables. This seventh golden age is first given to the untouchables. They are all of you. And many of you come from different spiritual paths. Yet no matter what path or religion or institution of education that you use to evolve yourself, this is the nature of our universe. Our universe never stops evolving. It is continuously becoming more. Expansion is its nature. And so whether a current education or religion serves you, only you know what serves you. Yet I beg of you this day to understand the only way duality can lock itself into your consciousness and keep you from experiencing your all-knowing mind and your all-loving heart and your all-powerful will to make it so. The one piece that makes duality work is the absence of the mother's love. The absence. Now, I speak of this from the center of creation. I invite all of you, bring it down. Bring it down to levels that you may know of. The absence of the mother's love is the impoverishment of women. And not so long ago, women in your own nation of America did not have the right to vote. In modern nations today, religions, uh, countries compelled by their religions, women are yet second-hand citizens. What is this? This is the old hand-me-down consciousness that must deny the divine feminine. Oh, blessed hearts, as you welcome the idea of a heavenly father, but not a heavenly father that judges, a heavenly father that is the mind behind our universe. You know, blessed hearts, I cannot be driven crazy because of who I am. But if I was walking amongst you as a human being, I would say to you, it drives me crazy when I hear Christians say, God hates it when you do this. God hates it when you do that. My message for you, if your God hates, I don't wish to have anything to do with your God. For the God that I know that is the Father of our universe is endless light and has no capacity for hatred. Hatred is the bottom rung of the path of duality. And so in these days, I almost beg you to set aside all beliefs that have crippled you from becoming all that you truly are. The Father will come unto you and He will say, I am. And I am the mystery that is found in that famous phrase, I am that I am. And I, the mother, will come unto you and I too will say, I am. And I almost beg of you to abandon 
abandon as quickly as you can from your consciousness. The idea of a hostile God, God has never judged against his people. We have often had conversations upstairs where we have amused ourselves and said, maybe you should have judged. Maybe the wars and the terrible darkness would have ended long ago. But you have free will. The Father is the light and the mind behind our universe. And I, the mother, am the love and the heart behind this universe. The Akashic force that is throughout all interstellar space. The Father gives you a mind to conceive, to use your beautiful minds. The mother gives you a heart and the love of the mother's heart is what fulfills everything your mind conceives. So do you see what the sinister force has done to you? Do you see what duality has done? And duality will remain in you for many more lifetimes. But it can start ending now. If you will accept the other half of your true spiritual nature, mind, the Father, the masculine activity, light, heart, the mother, the feminine activity that offers the love. Without true love, divine love, that each of you were equipped to go forth into this universe, you compromise yourself. And how difficult has it been to live on earth? How difficult is it when you have wonderful ideas and yet no matter how hard you try and in the old world you had to make such effort to bring those wonderful ideas forth. Yet when you have accepted the mother's presence, the divine feminine, and when you know it expresses in your life only when it is acknowledged and accepted and invited, then it becomes an active presence of love in your heart. Then the true union, the union of the groom and the bride, the union of the mind and the heart takes place. And in a few short years, you are thinking and receiving amazing ideas. And to every one of those ideas that you say yes to, love starts flowing from your hearts. And this is not the human love that is feigned and joyful one moment and hurtful in the next. No, 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 no. This is the mother's love that asks nothing for itself only seeks to reveal itself in you. It seeks to nurture you and it seeks to fulfill everything your mind conceives. If you ask me, is there one thing that is behind all our efforts to correct conditions worldwide or individually because sometimes individually or worldwide it seems as soon as we've corrected one problem another comes up is there one piece missing is there one piece that brings an end to that Yes, it is what has been so absent in your people's world. She is not found in your religions. 
She is not taught in your universities. And only in this last 82 years have there been untouchables stepping on to this planet. Brave souls, ancient souls, old souls, courageous enough to say enough is enough. From the abolition of slavery to the freeing of women's rights and all that has advanced in the last 82 years. What does that represent? What does it represent to you today when there are more women who are leaders? When there are more women who are presidents and chairwomen of corporations and where today there are even more women leading free nations of this world. What does that say to you beyond anything that you might think that I would add to that? What is the force? What is the force acting in you that says enough is enough? We have rights too. We are equal to every man. But what is that force acting in you? It's your heart. It is where I placed my love, Ayakasha, long ago. And the untouchables that have been in this world, they've been coming in for 3,000 years. They have pioneered magnificent human potential movements and every glorious age that has modernized civilization. But all of it had to be done in the presence of duality. And every time you create in the presence of duality, what you create, others will come and can use it for evil. As long as you create in a duality consciousness, wonderful, magnificent, good ideas may come forth in you. Yet there are those who will come and take that invention and use it destructively. Would you like the most, the biggest example before you today? The internet. A magnificent idea. Allowing the communication of peoples worldwide. Yes. Are there those who use the internet for evil and wicked ways? Absolutely. So let that be an example. Yet, in the remaining time that I have with you today, I wish to impress upon you. There are spiritual principles behind our universe that are as exact as any scientific formula or principle. And it is a spiritual principle that will never fail you if you stay with it. Acknowledgement acceptance and invitation. An example. I acknowledge and I accept that within my heart is a love that is beyond human love. It is a love that is the divine feminine and makes no difference if you're in a masculine body or a feminine body. It is the love of the mother's presence. It is the love that was always intended to fulfill what the mind would conceive. And from this day forward, with all of my heart, I will use my free will and I will acknowledge, I will accept, I may put it in my own words that are friendly to my being, but I will acknowledge and I will accept and I will invite this presence of the mother's love. That we human beings, we hid that from ourselves. We used our free will to deny that there even was a mother principle. 
behind this universe. And we have suffered. Suffer no more. Use this magical principle. Use it in your prayers. Use it in your meditations. I lovingly acknowledge and accept that there is a presence in my heart that is not made from this world. It is the mother's presence. It is the greatest love of all. It is divine love. And I invite that divine love that is hidden in the inner chambers of my heart. I invite that love to come up into my mind and become one with all ideas and all thoughts and to be the source that fulfills everything I conceive. And I know that if I do this every day, my way of manifesting, my way of materializing, my ability to make things happen as beautifully and as perfectly as I can will so dramatically improve. As I am amongst you this day, I say to you, I come not to test or question your beliefs. And forgive me if I have said anything that offends you. Yet I must say, I have spoken the universal truth. And inside your heart, you know that I have spoken truth. The future. What is it like? The seventh golden age is 10,000 years. It is made up of very short cycles. Divine intervention is upon this planet. This seventh golden age, to ensure its victory and to ensure there is constant shift and changing upon this planet and tremendous spiritual upliftment, this seventh golden age is made up of seven year cycles. You are in your opening months, your first three months of the first seven years of many seven year cycles that make up this golden age. Prophecy speaks that there cometh changes upon this planet. When you use the internet, when you read books, and you search of prophecy, I urge you to understand one thing. Many of the prophecies and those that were suggested to happen at this time and even times past many of those prophecies have been avoided how did that happen it happened because many of you who are untouchables and will continue to become more untouchable discovered the sacred fire and many of you in your prayers have been calling out to the great Archangel Michael and to legions of light and the angelic host to lead the sacred fire unto the earth to begin to purify the toxins and the poisons. Yet the numbers of you who have the knowledge of the sacred fire are so small, a few million of almost seven billion incarnate. And, <coughs> and so your calls and your reaching up to the sacred fire comes up against the will of seven billion people who know not the existence of such things. Yet the power of the sacred fire is strong. While there is a ring of fire that is said to be around the islands of Japan and that which softens 
and causes the earth to tremble. And all the way through the lands of Indonesia, prophecies given long ago, and even through the child, Lucia, in the vision of Fatima, of the collapse of the Japanese islands, and this very volatile area, that whole prophecy has been set aside due to students around the world who discovered the sacred fire and discovered that Michael is not just any angel. He is a great cosmic angel that can project his cosmic blue flames where discord and hatred builds and consume much of it, setting aside prophecy. Lose not yourself in any silly ideas of the end of the world. Are there dangers amongst you? Yes. But for those of you who worry of dangers that might come from above, no such dangers exist. Are there visitors from other systems of worlds who are watching? Yes, they have been allowed to come in and watch the events that will unfold in these 10,000 years. As has always been, the great dangers that are upon this planet have been created by human beings themselves. The greatest danger to the people of Earth, as peoples move away from an appetite for war, new dangers enter into the populations of the people. The deliberate poisoning of the water and the food of the land, the compromising the powers of nature and the forces of the elements, and holding them hostage and not allowing them to produce fresh water and foods. The controlled feeding of animals in controlled farms, producing meat that is poisoned and vexious to the physical body. And many other things are current problems that the people of earth may face. Yet I say to you, will a great light appear from above? Yes, it will come. Is there a prophecy of three days of light that will come to the earth? Yes, it will come. But none of it will come until many of you who are destined to be untouchables, many of you must continue your spiritual ed education and do everything you can to learn how to grow the light inside your magnificent bodies that you have been given. As you learn to grow the light into your bodies, when you think of every image you have ever looked at, images in which portrait artists have brought forth pictures of angels and ascended beings, and you see this beautiful aura of light around them, know ye not that that light comes from inside them? It is not projected down upon them. It expresses out from them. And this all of you will do. Follow your spiritual paths. Stay hungry for truth. Read, search, apply, decree, sing, pray, meditate upon the great light and the love of our universe and welcome it to come forth into expression in your life. There is great intervention and it is said at this hour to everyone on earth who will do everything they can to spiritually evolve themselves, 
Keep learning. Keep reaching within and above. There are those upstairs in heavenly realms. As you reach your hand up and ask for help and intervention, there are those who will take your hand and lead you lead you back to yourself the beautiful glorious being that you were made to be it is said in our language upstairs that I am is the name of God I am is God in action and I am is your own spiritual name and reveals your own spiritual individualization within the great cosmic picture. There are many of us who are reaching out to help the people of earth. And we say to you, keeping in mind that I am is your true identity and what you wish to become in thought, in feeling, in conviction, in attitude, in word, in action, you yourselves fill in the blanks. I am what? I am light. I am love. I am majestic. I am beautiful. I am strong. Know that you are I am. But know, as this seventh golden age opens, every spiritual guide, every spiritual counselor, every ascended being, every angelic being, every goddess, archangel, chohan, great beings of light from above. And they are making contact with you in your dreams and your prayers and your vision. And they will say to you, Whatever has caused you to be less than I am, give that to me. Let me take that from you so that you can rise and become the great I am that each of you are and unveil the mystery behind those words, I am that I am. I thank you. And in my number of words that you have given me the great opportunity to share with you, if there is even one sentence of words that might touch your heart, I pray I have served you this day. May the blessings of your true and wonderful life find great expression in all days forward. I would love to spend hours and hours and hours with you. God bless you. And I greet you in an old language. Namaste. I thank you. Bless you, Mother Akasha, and we are so grateful for your love and your sharing with us today.